Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing the Champions Report, and this will be on the WBO, the World Boxing Organization, as we cover all champions from Super Bantamweight 122 all the way to the heavyweight division at over 200 pounds. Now before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So this is the last regular champions report that we're gonna do for the year. Remember, I do this every two months, um, usually at the end of every even month. And uh, so this one will be the last regular one we're gonna do. We're gonna have an end of year champions report heading into the new year, 2024. And we'll cover the whole year for each uh, division and champion. Um, and then we will get into the, um, the rest of the year and uh you know i mean the new year and what could be coming up in any predictions so let's get started now 122 pounds super bantamweight the reigning undefeated unified champion is the monster naola in anyway and we know what he's doing next on tuesday december 26th on espn plus he is going to try to become a two division undisputed world champion in the four bell area he will be only the second fighter to ever accomplish that feat if he does next to Terrence Bud Crawford who did it earlier this year for his second division. So uh, he, he squares off against fellow unified champion Marlon Tapolis and it should be a good one. Anyways, coming in a heavy favorite and I think he's going to knock Tapolis out. I don't think he should have too much of an issue with Tapolis, um, uh, but he definitely can't overlook him. But I absolutely think Nayoa Inoue is going to be the new undisputed Super Bantamweight champion by the time we do the end of year champions report at the end of December, beginning of January. So make sure to check that out again Tuesday, December 26th, ESPN Plus. And it'll be very early Tuesday morning if you're here in the United States. 126, Featherweight. The reigning champion there is Robesi Ramirez. And Ramirez has signed on for his third and final fight of the year. In December, on December 9th, in the main event of an ESPN card, he will defend his title for the second time when he takes on undefeated Rafael Espinoza. Now, he has a considerable, you know, he's a considerable favorite going into this fight, but Espinoza's a big guy. He knocks fighters out, but he's never fought a fighter on the level of Ramirez as of yet. I'm picking Ramirez to get the victory here. I think he'll break down Espinoza and stop him in the middle to late rounds, or he'll get a clean unanimous decision and retain his title but he definitely cannot be looking overlooking a fighter like Espinosa and we'll see what goes down again December 9th ESPN 130 super featherweight the reigning champion there is Emmanuel Navarrete of Mexico uh, Navarrete is set to return for his third time this year as he'll make the second defense of his title when he battles former two-time world title challenger Robson Conceichao of Brazil. Big fight right here between these two guys. I was very surprised that Navarrete signed on to take on a guy like Conceichao because he has that awkward style, uh, you know, and he's a pure boxer and he might be able to upend Navarrete, but I don't think that's going to happen. The fight takes place Thursday, November 16th on an ESPN undercard as um, uh, Navarrete, as, as it's on the Shakur Stevenson, Edwin De Los Santos uh, card. It's a great co-feature. I can't wait to see it, and it's on a Thursday night on November 16th, so make sure you check that out because it is going to be fun to watch that fight. 135, lightweight. The reigning undefeated and now unified champion is Devin Haney of the United States. Haney um, decided that he is going to move up to 140 in his next bout and battle Regis Progre on December 9th for the 140 pound WBC title. The WBC uh, then declared the belt vacant. Uh, Haney's a champion at recess in case he chooses to move back down in the WBC, so he's no longer undisputed champion. That's the only reason I'm mentioning this. I know it's the WBO Champions Report we're speaking of. Um, personally, I don't believe Devin Haney. I think he's gonna beat Regis Progre most likely on December 9th, but I don't believe he's gonna be returning to 135. I think he's gonna stick it out at 140, and because the weight's more comfortable and he's gonna go after the bigger fights there, 
like Tiafimo Lopez fights like that. Um, if that's the case and he becomes champion at 140, I believe that I believe that the WBO title is going to go vacant, and I think there's a strong chance that the number two contender Vasily Lomachenko will battle Imanu Navarrete, who's the the junior lightweight champ at 130, and would likely be moving up to 135 to fight. Um, we'll see what happens on December 9th and what happens before the end of the year for Haney, but I do believe that that is in the mix right now. Um, we may or may not know for sure, and Haney may not decide as of yet by the end of the year what's going on, but hopefully we hear something and we'll keep you posted. 140, Junior Welterweight. The reigning, and the reigning champion there is Tiafimo Lopez. Lopez still hasn't scheduled his first defense of his world title. Um, you know, we weren't quite sure what he was going to do. Uh, the ongoing favorite for his next fight is Jose Ramirez, the former unified champ. But there's also undefeated number one contender, Arna Barbosa Jr. Um, and, you know, Lopez might just sign on to fight Barbosa to get his mandatory out of the way. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm hoping by the end of the year we know when Lopez is going to be fighting again. I'm hoping he returns in January or February. And again, we'll see what goes down at the end of the year champions report. Walter Wade, 147. The reigning undefeated and undisputed welterweight champion of the world is Terrence Bud Crawford. Uh, Crawford uh, still hasn't announced his next fight, and we're not even sure if it's going to take place at 147. We know Errol Spence activated the rematch clause, but they are trying to negotiate what they're going to do. There's been talks that, that the fight wasn't happening, that it, it, it's still happening. It's been going back and forth a lot. Um, and they're saying that some reports are saying that Crawford and Spence will fight at 154. Some reports are saying that Crawford doesn't want to fight Spence at 154. Um, we're not too sure, but we do know that Spence activated the rematch clause and they are negotiating right now. Personally, myself, I think Crawford is going to fight Spence at 154 and then the WBO title here at 147 will become vacant and your number one and number two contender, it should be Giovanni Santian, should move up to number one because he dominated Alexis Rocha, who was the previous number one. So he should have taken that spot now. And Cody Crowley is sitting there at number two right now. And I really believe if there's a vacant title on the line and it could happen next, I think Crowley would probably go after that belt with Santian. But hopefully we hear something by the end of the year on that champions report and we can you know see which direction the wbo welterweight title is going 154 super welterweight the reigning and undefeated champion there is tim zoo of australia zoo returned in october and took on um uh, brian mendoza the wbc interim champion outworked them over 12 rounds got a deserving 12 round unanimous decision and is still the champion um he called out Jermel Charlo after the fight. Uh, we still don't know what's going on because the WBO has also made way for Terrence Crawford to move up to 154 and challenge Tim Zhu if um, the fight with Charlo is not makeable or if Crawford doesn't make the fight, the rematch with Spence. A lot of things up in the air right now on what's going to go down uh, next for Tim Zhu. I personally believe it's going to be Jermel Charlo, but I'm not sure we're going to hear the announcement of that fight before the end of the year. I think if it's not Charlo, I think there's a strong chance that it's going to be Bud Crawford instead. But if it's neither one of those guys, Tim Zhu is probably just going to choose somebody in the PBC that he can beat um, that's a decent contender. So we should have a little bit more clear of a roadmap by the end of the year to give a full answer of what Zoo might do next. Uh, 160, middleweight. The reigning undefeated WBO and now unified champion is Jonabek Alam Alamanhalai, who uh, unified, who is also the IBF middleweight champ. He returned in October in unified belts with a dominating six-round TKO victory over previously undefeated Vicente Gualtieri. Um, Jonabek had no trouble. He went in there, 
broken down, six round TKO, and, it, and now has two of the four titles in a 160 pound middleweight division. Now, Jonabek has been calling out all the fighters. His number one contender is Chris Eubank Jr., but Eubank doesn't seem keen to want to fight Jonabek. He says Jonabek doesn't have a name at all, but he has two belts, so I don't see why Eubank would avoid that. But we know Eubank wants to fight Connor Van um, in their big showdown, uh, their legacy showdown. Um, but, uh, but my personal opinion is that Jonabek is probably going to face somebody along the lines of uh, a Liam Smith. And I think Liam Smith should challenge Jonabek just to throw himself right back in the mix. You know, Liam Smith wants to fight anybody and he wants to fight for a championship in, a, in another weight class. That's his goal. And I think he's going to go after it. Um, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully we have a clear picture on what's going to happen. If it's not Liam Smith, I think the WBO is going to scramble and find John Beck a mandatory challenger next because there has not been a mandatory WBO title fight in quite some time now. Uh, 168, super middleweight. The reigning WBO and undisputed super middleweight champion is Canelo Alvarez. Uh, Canelo uh, returned in September, defended his undisputed title against undisputed super welterweight champ at 154, Jermel Charlo. He broke down Charlo, um, you know, scored a, uh, a seventh round uh, knockdown, and then went on to a one-sided unanimous decision. Uh, Canelo is still deciding on what he is going to do next. He hasn't uh, made a choice, but a rumor came out this week that he could be returning in May and taking on Jaime Minguia with the idea of fighting the winner of Benavides and Andre in September of next year. So hopefully by the end of the year, we have a little bit more clear cut of, of, of an answer because Benavides and Andre are fighting at the end of November and that should clear the path a little bit to see what Canelo is gonna do next. Um, you know, personally, I don't like the Manguilla uh, fight, but I do understand that Canelo, if he's gonna fight the winner of Benavides and Andre in September, he needs a little bit more of a softer touch um, before that, so we'll see. 175 light heavyweight, the reigning undefeated and unified light heavyweight, WBO and uh, unified light heavyweight champ is Arthur Better Beev. Better Beev, we know, is returning in January on ESPN to defend his WBO and unified titles against his WBC mandatory number one contender and former super middleweight champion, Callum Smith of the United Kingdom. They were supposed to fight in August. Uh, some retinal uh, thing happened with Better Beev to where he had to postpone the fight. Now they will collide in January. Um, I'll give my prediction on that fight at the end of the year when I do my end of the year champions report. Uh, 200, Cruiserweight. The reigning champion there is Chris Billum Smith of the United Kingdom. Um, he finally got his next fight signed. Uh, he will face off against veteran Matuz Masternak on December 10th, which is a Sunday. Uh, no American television as of right now. It says Sky Sports. That's the new uh, thing. or Well, that's the ongoing thing in the United Kingdom. I'm hoping ESPN or somebody picks up that fight because I think it should be a decent one. Bill and Smith uh, hasn't fought since May when he defeated Lawrence O'Coley in an upset to capture the WBO title. There was some uh, issues with whether a rematch was going to be activated by O'Coley or not. It never was. And Chris Billum Smith now is set to return December 10th against Masternak. I think if Chris Billum Smith is the real deal, he'll beat Matuz Masternak. But Masternak is a tough veteran. I think Billum Smith gets him by a decision, a unanimous decision on December 10th. Should be good. Again, I'm hoping it lands on American television. And finally, the heavyweight belt and champion is the undefeated and unified WBO champion, or <laughs> the WBO and unified reigning champ at heavyweight is Oleksandr Usyk. Usyk and Fury finally signed for sure for a fight to take place in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it was originally scheduled for December 23rd, as long as Fury didn't suffer any injuries uh, in his fight with Francis Naganu. That fight just happened the other day on the 28th of October. Um, Usyk now, uh, it, it's looking like uh, Frank Warren and Tyson Fury look like they're leaning towards that fight not happening on December 23rd after all. Fury did go 10 hard rounds with Nagano. He got put down in that fight, and he also suffered a cut on his forehead. So we're going to see how, we're going to see what's up. 
I personally am leaning towards that fight probably taking place in January or February now. Uh, to return two, less than two months following a tough fight like that, whether it should have been a tough fight or not, is going to be difficult, especially when you're challenging for Undisputed. But at least the fight is going to pop off, and hopefully we hear some news on what's going on with Fury and Usyk. If the fight were to take place, I will still pick Tyson Fury to beat Usyk on December 23rd. But I do think Usyk is a very live underdog going into that fight. And the fact that Fury fought a tougher fight with Naganu than he should have, I think raises uh, raises the question of um, our, it raises the question, and it also gives uh, the Usyk community and that side and the boxing community more more doubt that Fury can beat Usyk. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we hear something very soon on the official date for Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk for the undisputed uh, undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. So, that's it. That's what I got. That is my WBO Champions Report for the end of October heading into November. I hope you enjoyed the video and join me back at the end of the year to go over the WBO Full Year Champions Report um, as we discuss every belt from 122 all the way to heavyweight. And that's it. That's what I got. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.